Guys, in this video, let us look at this terminology exostosis. Okay, it can also be written with an e exostosis. Okay, so textbook is using both these spellings, so you choose whichever you want. It is also called a surface ear. So exam they can ask you exostosis or surface ear. So just remember that when the uh, when these people swimmers, uh, all these uh, surfers, uh, scuba divers, all these people wherever the water, cold water is entering, right? Uh, their ear. Right, they will have this surface ear or exostosis. Right, so let us understand what exactly is happening. So, what is happening? Cold water is entering the external auditory canal. So, what is happening? The bone is growing into the external auditory canal, isn't it? So, this this is the growth. This is the growth, bone growth. So, let us look at what exactly exo stosis is exostosis or ex, uh, surface ear is a benign it's a benign condition of the external ear canal which are the other conditions of the external ear can, can, uh, canal which are benign osteoma exostosis we are seeing in this video seruminoma sebaceous adenoma papilloma okay which and all are malignant let's just take a look at them also which and all are malignant squamous cell carcinoma basal cell carcinoma adenocarcinoma malignant seru Menoma and melanoma. See, this seruminoma has a counterpart, malignant seruminoma, and uh, sebaceous something was there, no. But as such, this exostosis doesn't have any malignant counterpart, at least in this list. Let us read further and understand, then only we will know if this can, how this will manifest and what exactly happens. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so these are the photos. This is the normal left ear. But if you look at the surface here, how it is, this guy's uh, bone has completely grown inside, isn't it? So you can see the exostosis. Okay. Surface ear exostosis. These are multiple bilateral. So they are in both the ears. Okay. They are in both the ears. Multiple. They are not like some single thing. There are multiple, right? We saw three in that photo. Multiple bilateral, often presenting a smooth. They are smooth. Okay, they are presenting a smooth, sessile, sessile means what, there is no peduncle, right? Bony swellings in the deeper part of the meatus. So, it is not the, uh, it's not more towards the outside world, it's near the eardrum if you see. That's why they have written here, deeper part of the meatus near the tympanic membrane. So, where are these bone swellings? In the deeper part of the meatus near the tympanic membrane. They they exostosis is this they kind of hanging somewhere wait okay we got it the, they arise from compact bone okay they arise from bone that much we knew now they are adding some more information they arise from compact bone exostosis is often seen in persons okay so the same thing is repeated here okay wait exostosis is often seen in persons exposed to entry of cold water in the meatus as in divers and swimmers, males are affected three times more than females. So, it is more in males. Okay. Then, cold water is some word you should not forget to write. And they arise from compact bone. Compact bone is what? Compact bone. See, in bone, there is compact bone. That is cortex, right? That is compact bone. And then you have cancerous bone, right? Which will be the bone marrow. If you remember in our uh, anatomy video, we have seen this compact bone, cancellous bone. So, we are talking about the cortical or the compact bone, right? So, let us look at this uh, whole slide again. So, it is we are looking at surface here. It is also called exostosis. Exostosis. They are multiple bilateral smooth sessile bony swellings where in the deeper part of the meatus, it is deep. Remember, it is deeper part of meatus near tympanic membrane. How do they arise from the bone? Which bone? Compact bone. They are seen in people who are exposed to cold water in the meatus. In the meatus, if they are exposed to cold water, like divers, swimmers, scuba divers also, I think, right? Um, males are affected three times more than females. Okay. Shall we move on? What's the treatment? Surfers. Here, treatment. Okay. So, usually they don't need treatment, but uh, if it starts getting big, these uh, 
they will block the tympanic membrane, isn't it? They are kind of uh, blocking the uh, conduction to the tympanic membrane. So, there can be impaired he hearing, right? This can impair hearing. Then, it can cause retention of wax and other debris. Yes, because the canal is becoming so small, so wax, debris, everything can accumulate. How will you remove all this? High speed drill to restore normal sized meatus. So, they are doing surgi surgery. Exostosis may extend deeply and lie in close relationship to the facial nerve. Therefore, use of gauge and hammer should be avoided. So, because this is in very close relation, the surgery when you are doing, remember, it is in very close relationship to the facial nerve. So, you should be very careful while doing this surgery. Okay. Gauge and hammer should be avoided. If you remember, guys, we have a video on this nerve supply of external auditory canal. There, can you see? It says the posterior wall of the auditory canal receives fibers from facial nerve 7. Right, this is the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7, facial nerve. So, this is where it is kind of, uh, we are able to correlate now, isn't it? They don't seem to be bothered about trigeminal or vagus, but they are bothered about facial nerve. See, facial nerve is marked here in this diagram, facial nerve. So, from where is it coming? From here, facial nerve. Here you have the geniculate ganglion, greater petrosal nerve, which is a branch of facial nerve. Then it's taking a bend here, coming down. So, this is the facial nerve. Okay. So, treatment, they told you what they want to do is they want to do a high speed drill to remove all that bone. That's all you have to remember here. High speed drill, it kind of sounds very scary, isn't it? High speed drill. Okay. So, what exactly is the problem for this person? Water reten uh, uh, retention of stuff, wax, debris, etc. Impaired hearing also. So, now we are done till where we are done. We have started off with exostosis, exostosis surface here. We looked at that. It is a benign uh, condition of the external ear canal. And we saw what exactly is happening here. We looked at some clinical pictures. So, basically multiple uh, growths are there, right? Multiple protrusions into the external auditory canal. Bilaterally, they are there. In the deeper part of the meatus, these are sessile. Uh, they don't have any stalk, etc. These are sessile. They are, they are bony swellings. And uh, in the deep part in the meatus, these are there. Okay. How to treat? Surgery is high speed drill. Now, let us look at some other things. Whenever you do an examination of the external auditory canal, when you, uh, you cannot from, uh, just see it. You need a speculum. So, when you see it with a speculum, you'll be able to see the exostosis. Okay. Then. So, this is, this will cause what type of hearing loss? Conductive hearing loss because there is no conduction of the sound wave via the air, right? To the tympanic membrane. So, uh, conductive hearing loss, one of the management is if there is an exostosis, you have to remove it. Then. This we already saw. This is yet another definition. If you want, you can learn this. Exostosis of external ear auditory canal. Because when you type this word exostosis, it gives you a different thing in the internet, mate. Oh no, it's the same thing. Bone spur. Formation of new bone on the surface of bone. Okay, so this is what it is. Okay, so it can be. Now we are talking about this exostosis where in the ear. So we will update our slide. Exostosis is bone spur. Bone growth over existing uh, surface of the bone. Formation of new bone on the surface of bone. Exostosis of external auditory canal when we are talking about the ear are multiple and usually associated with cold water swimming while osteoma of external canal usually single and occurs at suture lines. So, remember how will you differentiate an exostosis from an osteoma? Osteoma will be single, right? It is usually single. And it occurs at suture lines, like the tympanomastoid, suture lines it will occur. Okay. So, this is the image for osteoma that they have given here. Osteoma arising from anterior wall of right auditory, external auditory canal. So, is this this one? Osteoma arising from anterior, so this is anterior wall of the right auditory canal. Okay. So, we are... 
So if they ask exostosis or surface here in the exam, you can't just write some definition and leave. You have to tell all these things. You have to differentiate it from osteoma, etc. Right? Then. Let's move on to the next slide. Exostosis. Impacted wax or cerumen. Why will this happen? In exostosis it can happen because it will favor the retention of wax. So impacted wax. What will happen because of exostosis? Impacted wax. Okay, then uh, if a person has otosclerosis and you want to do a TP surgery on this on that person, you cannot do if that guy has exostosis. Okay, exostosis will become a relative contraindication. So if they first get the exostosis treated, <clears throat> then stepidectomy can be done. That's what they have written here. Stepidectomy can be done after they have been treated first for above conditions. Hello people, what are we looking at? Exostosis. So what and all special things you have looked at now? It can cause impacted wax, cerumen, then what else? Uh, in a person who has otosclerosis, if he has exostosis, you should not do surgery, right? STP surgery. Then what else? Have you seen some special, special things? <clears throat> Let's just go back and just take a recap. It's also called as bone spur. Okay. Then this person will have conductive hearing loss. You will have to examine the external auditory canal with a speculum. Then uh, we saw the treatment was high speed drill. Let's continue. So where were we? Approaches to the ear and incision. How is the incision and approach? It is end oral approach. So uh, for uh, exostosis or even osteoma they are saying. So if there is exostosis, the approach will be end oral approach. So we don't know what all this is, but what are the three things? Endomatal is there or transcanal approach is there. These are the options in ENT. Post oral is there, but what is the one that we are the interested in? End oral approach for exostosis. What is this end oral approach? Let us look at this. In this, they have uh, something called as the Lempert incision. Two Lempert incisions they are talking about, Lempert 1 and Lempert 2. Okay, let's try to understand this. Okay. Now here's the diagram. So there's a Lempert 1 here. Right? This is Lempert 1. And this is Lempert 2. This is the tympanic membrane. So this is a small one this is a magnified view in the small view also they're showing the same thing only so if this is the ear they're cutting here this is the limpert 2 limpert 1 is inside isn't it limpert 2 is here so here they're talking about the incisura terminalis tragus crux of the uh, helix all these terminologies you know right so here's the tragus isn't it this is the tragus this is the incisura terminalis, crux of helix, isn't the outer one the helix, so the innermost one should be, inner one should be the crux of helix. See this is the helix, the outer one is helix, what is this? Helix. Helix, helix yeah. See the inner one here, this is the anti-helix. Anti-helix. Yeah, and this one is the crux. Crux. There are two things, superior crux and inferior crux. Inferior tracks. Okay, so and here, where is the tragus? You're showing the tragus. This is the tragus. Here you have the incisura terminal. Incisura what? Yeah, incisura terminalis. So all this you should know. So the way they are making the incisions, all that you can look at it in detail. Now that's all we wanted to cover in this video. So what did we cover in this video? Exostosis or surface ear. Basically, it's a benign condition of the external ear canal. And uh, there is uh, deep in the meatus, there is bone growth, right? Uh, this is because of exposure to cold water. What is being exposed to cold water? The uh, external auditory canal. Then, uh, what is the treatment? High speed drill, this much you remember. First, it doesn't need treatment, but if it needs treatment, it is high speed drill. Then, um, what else? How can you differentiate from osteoma? Osteoma will be single and it will be in the suture lines. 
there can be impacted wax, uh, reduced hearing and all that. Then uh, if this person has otosclerosis, then you should not uh, do stepy, stepy surgery. Unless you fix this exostosis first. Then what is the surgical approach to the exostosis? It is end oral approach. So basically in that you have two incisions, Lempert 1, Lempert 2. So this much if you write, that's enough. End oral, remember Lempert 1, Lempert 2. This much you should remember. Okay, that's all now uh, in this video. Exostosis or surface here is done. Bye-bye.